In this video, we'll take a look at how to use the concept of mapping financial data in Excel so that we can easily prepare aggregated views from detailed breakdowns. Over the past 15 years, I've worked on countless financial statements, management reports, group reporting packages, and other internal reports. And I've noticed uh, something that a lot of juniors do, a lot of accountants do, which is whenever they have an aggregated view, for example, a balance sheet, which is the example we'll look at in a few seconds, and they have to fill it out based off on a trial balance or a general ledger or some form of a detailed breakdown, they would manually link, okay, this item is this plus this, this equals this plus this. And there are two huge issues with uh, this approach. The first one is that it's prone to a lot of errors especially if it's something that you need to prepare regularly because there's no way for you to figure out if your formulas still reference exactly the correct cells in your breakdown. And imagine if you have a hundred lines of a statement that you need to fill out, this means that you have a hundred completely different formulas and there's no way to track them and audit them and make sure that they work every time. The other big issue with this approach is that it takes a lot of time because every time you have to link all those rows from scratch. On the other hand, mapping allows you to prepare a map of your detailed breakdown and where each item fits within your aggregated view. And on one hand, this saves you a lot of time because you only need to do it the first time and then every time you can just reuse it. And on the other hand, it helps you to avoid a lot of human errors because if something changed in your detailed breakdown, it won't come up in your mapping and it will be easy to identify it and just fix it. While on the other hand, if you add a new role to your uh, detailed breakdown or you add a new account to your trial balance and you're only using your this equals this plus this approach, you won't know that this new account wasn't included. I'm going to show you how to apply this concept uh, for a balance sheet, but it's pretty much the same approach for all kinds of reports. And I'm also going to go a step further and show you what I like to call a negative mapping, which allows me to work with different levels of detail at the same time and uh, be able to easily represent them correctly in my final report. Now let's open Excel and dive straight in. Here I have a balance sheet structure for uh, March and um, what I've seen over and over as I was uh, talking about this, uh, people would just come in here and uh, say, okay, cash equals, they're going to go to their uh, GL or trial balance and uh, I'm going to talk about those in a second. Find where they have the cash in bank and just link it and that would be it. And the problem with building the whole statement that way is that whenever you add a new account next month or you switch the place of something, it becomes harder and harder to track if all your formulas here are actually linking to the correct thing. So this is where the concept of mapping uh, comes into play. So here I have two versions that I've mostly seen. So some ERPs uh, are not really meant for accounting, sadly. So they will just give you an accumulated amount for each account and uh, for uh, income statement accounts, those would be like the accumulated turnover. And for balance sheet accounts, it would be effectively the net closing balance. And the more traditional trial balance might look something like this. So you have the opening balance, both on the debit and credit side, then you have the debit and credit turnovers and the closing balance. And you calculate your net closing balance in the case where you want to fill out your balance sheet. Let's work with uh, this version here. And um, I usually separate the mapping in three different columns. So I have the statement. Right now we're only focusing on the balance sheet, but uh, usually you would have the income statement as well. And this first column would just indicate which of these accounts goes where. Then you have the line item. This will be the item from the statement itself. And uh, in some cases, I might even go further into note line items. So if we're preparing notes to the financial statement, 
we would sometime, let's say something that's only uh, treat and uh, other payables here. For accounts payable, we'll have a note that breaks that down into uh, different uh, categories. So mapping is uh, a long-term game, if I can say it like that. So the idea is that you do the mapping once and then you only need to adjust it whenever you change an account or add a new account or uh, remove one. That's the only uh, time that you need to adjust your mapping. Otherwise, you will just get your next trial balance. You VLOOK UP your mapping and uh, you'll be done. And that's the, the beauty of it. So let's start assigning those. I know that everything all the way till my cash here is balance sheet items. So I'm gonna say BS and control enter to populate the whole selection. And uh, then I have my income statement accounts here, everything all the way to prepaid expenses. This is a balance sheet account, control D to copy it down. Then this is uh, part of the balance sheet and the rest is income statement again. I'm pretty much flying through this because I know this uh, uh, trial balance. And if you are building such a statement for someone else, for a client or something like that, you'll probably have to sit down with their accounting uh, team or uh, someone from uh, the accounting department and talk about what should go where, because uh, you probably have pretty good understanding about most of those. For example, computer equipment would obviously go into the balance sheet and uh, would obviously be property, plant and equipment. But for some of those, you might need some uh, help from uh, the team there. So essentially there's no formula for that uh, is what I'm saying is that you just need to go through all the lines that you have here and assign a line item that matches one of the line items in this uh, balance sheet. So I'm just gonna go through it really quick this will be issued capital, this will be retained earnings. And uh, there it is, all my balance sheet items have been mapped to a line item that matches one of the items in this balance sheet here. So let's go ahead and uh, fill those out. And we'll be using the sum ifs formula. We need the sum range, the criteria range one and criteria range two. So our sum range will be our accumulated amount over here then our criteria range will be first the statement. And I always do that because uh, sometimes you might have the same line item name in your balance sheet and in your income statement. Uh, payroll is an example that I can think of that is often used in both statements. So I would always hard code this as balance sheet and uh, then my criteria range two will be the line item and my criteria will be this here, the right of use uh, in this case, so the line item from here. Enter, and then I can just copy paste this everywhere. And uh, you see here that as soon as I move into the equity and liabilities uh, side of the balance sheet, it comes up with negative signs because uh, it's a credit balance, so the, the, the net balance is negative. So what we need to do is uh, adjust this formula with a minus sign and then Go ahead and copy paste it everywhere. And we have a difference here in our uh, balance sheet check. And uh, this is essentially the difference between our uh, assets and total equity and liabilities. And in most cases, this is because the trial balance is not closed, which means that not all income statement accounts have been transferred to uh, a result for the year. So let's do that really quick. Adjustments, this will be uh, my uh, current year result or current period because we're only looking at March. Copy the formatting here and then I'll have my March 24 adjusted. Copy the formatting here as well. And I'm gonna make those two a bit smaller. So essentially here I'll have the exact same formatting we are going to copy the whole thing over here and just uh, change the formulas to those to be this plus my adjustment. Copy that over all the places and uh, I get the same result. And now we can adjust this here. And uh, in this case, just going to uh, brute force it a bit because we don't have the uh, income statement. Just going to go to the balance sheet and just grab all the income statement accounts and uh, they should give me exactly uh, this amount. However, I need to adjust this uh, with a minus. 
and the front and you see that we now get uh, no uh, difference between the total assets and total equity and liabilities. So essentially our balance sheet is done. And uh, next time when we need to do it, we can just VLOOK up this mapping and use it the exact same way. And it should take us like just a few minutes to update it. However, here you see that we have credit cards and uh, I know that we have credit cards, but nothing comes up. And uh, the reason for that is that credit cards I have a breakdown here. Credit cards is part of our other creditors and it's not showing up separately, but we want it to be uh, separate. So what we can do here is we can do another adjustment or we can do what I like to call negative mapping. I can copy this here and say negative mapping that a bit i'm gonna copy all this with control r and uh, i'll say that uh, credit cards because they're part of other creditors I'm gonna look for other creditors here and see that this is trade and other payables so i'm just gonna copy that and paste it here next to credit cards and for the line item i'm gonna just say credit cards here this the exact same way that uh, we've given it in our uh, balance sheet and uh, i also need to have balance sheet here so now the formula that we prepared for the above should work and uh, you see here that we have our credit cards already on a separate line but now we have a difference because we need to remove them from our trade and other payables and this is where this negative mapping uh, will happen so what i'll do and i'll do it for all the rows because I want to make sure that uh, whenever I add a negative mapping anywhere else, it would just work. So after the sum ifs, I would just add minus sum ifs and I'm gonna go to the trial balance. So this is the sum range. My criteria range is once again this here and I want it to be balance sheet. And then instead of selecting this here line item, I'm gonna select this negative mapping and I want this to be the same line item here. Okay, copy this over, over those, copy it here and it says uh, negative 200. We need a negative sign here. I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in brackets so that this uh, minus here works the same way. Copy this over and as soon as I paste it here, this 272 should decrease and you see that it decreased and now we have no difference here. So this is another way to use mapping, not only just to build your statement, but you can also use it to adjust things with this uh, negative mapping concept. And now let's take it a step further and uh, see how we can uh, also build our financial statement notes. So let's say here we have accounts payable and I'm actually gonna use the exact same name as it's in my balance sheet. I'm gonna copy that and uh, just bring it over here, paste it as values. So now we need to do the exact same mapping approach that we did before, but with these, and we'll only be looking at accounts that are mapped as trade and other payables. So I went ahead and filled those. Let me just expand that a bit. So you see that everywhere where I had trade and other payables, I now provided one of the lines that I have in this note here. We can now follow the exact same approach. And because it's a liability account, I'm gonna start with uh, minus, I'm gonna say some ifs, go back to the trial balance. And uh, I want to be summing this, where I'm gonna make sure there's absolutely no possibility for error in the formula. So I'm gonna say for criteria range one, this, and my criteria will be that I want it to be balance sheet. Then for my financial statement line item, I want it to always be this here. So I know that this note is only calculating things that are already in this line in the balance sheet. I'm gonna fix that with F4 so that it always references uh, this cell up here. And then my last uh, criteria, my third criteria range will be this column here with the uh, note line item and my last criteria will be the line here. Copy that down with control D and uh, we get 272. Now let's make a check to our balance sheet. We want this minus and uh, in this case, we can just directly link it because the balance sheet probably won't change that much. And uh, don't forget to use the adjusted column. 
and now we get the credit card uh, difference as well. So we need to do the same thing that we did for the balance sheet, but uh, for the note. So here in the trial balance, I'm gonna add a new column and uh, call it note negative mapping. Copy that to the side. And uh, here we're gonna say other creditors and paste it as values here. So now in our uh, accounts payable notes, we can wrap this whole thing with uh, a bracket here and uh, at the end say minus some ifs. I'm gonna go to the trial balance and we're selecting the amount. We want this column, the uh, statement column to be balance sheet and we want our note negative mapping to echo the exact same row from here. Now, if we copy that down, we no longer uh, have the error and now our note matches our balance sheet. And that's essentially how mapping can really speed up your work. Granted, not the first time. The first time round, you have to spend a lot more time figuring out what should go where and preparing your mappings. But once you do it, then it should be a breeze to update it for every subsequent period, especially if you're doing like monthly reporting, this can save you a lot of time in the long run. And this is the power of mapping that uh, you can apply to all your projects, especially recurring ones, because it would save you a lot of time down the line and it would help you avoid those little, I would say dumb errors that uh, usually take the most time to, to figure out and find. And we're barely scratching the surface here. If you want to learn more about financial modeling, I have this playlist here where I take you step by step from an empty Excel spreadsheet to a full blown dynamic assumptions driven financial model. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in there.